Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Linux channel, Byte of Linux. So now, if you want to run Android applications on your Linux computer, I mean, you could use the built-in Android Studio emulator or Jenny Motion, but those are really meant for developers. Now, if you want to run these apps on your system casually and without these developer tools, you really don't have too many options. But recently, a new Linux application was released called Anbox or Android in a Box. And this takes a slightly different approach to Android emulation. So essentially what it does is it puts the whole Android OS into a container and then uses your native kernel to run it. And that allows it to integrate very tightly with your system and also allows the apps to integrate tightly. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you a little bit about Anbox, how to install it, how to set it up, and then do a simple test of it. So let's get started. So there is one very important thing to note about Anbox, and that is it's not stable, it's not in beta, it's not in alpha, it is in pre-alpha release stages. So that means that there will be a lot of bugs and a lot of crashes. So don't get worried if you see a lot of that happening, as it is very new software. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is open up a web browser. I'll be using Firefox in this video. And you can go to the web page Anbox.io. And this is the Anbox home page. Okay, here we are. So you can just scroll down. You can see some information about it, some features. And you want to get to the Get Started section. Now it says, Installing Anbox on a regular Linux system isn't hard when you already have the ability to install Snaps. So Snaps is essentially something that will allow you to easily install packages and it's made by Canonical, the company behind Ubuntu. So if you don't have this already, make sure to download and install this. And once that's done, you can go over to this and actually install Anbox. So this is the line that you want to run if you have Snap. So just copy that, open up a terminal, and run this command. And make sure you do it under root. So here we have a little bit of text here. We have these important notices. And down here you have two options, either install or uninstall and box. So you just want to enter one if you're doing it for the first time and type I agree in all caps to and start installing it. Make sure you've read all this stuff up here. So just enter and it should start the installation process. So if it installed successfully, it should say done right here. And if you encountered any problems during the installation, it's likely because you're running an unsupported distribution Ubuntu is tried and true, but other distributions might have problems. So over here it says to ensure all changes, make sure you reboot your system. So I'll do that right now and then resume the video once it's done. And we are back. So the first thing that you can notice is that there is a volume mounted here. And that is because Anbox mounts the container as a separate volume. That's fine. And as I said, it integrates very tightly, so you can't really edit all these files. So let's actually start Anbox. So sometimes if you just run Anbox, it won't load up, but if you go to your terminal and run Anbox session manager, and let that sit there, and then load up the Anbox app, it will work. So just click on Anbox after you have that other thing running. And it should appear like this. I just minimize that. So here is the Anbox Application Manager. And you can see that there are a few basic apps here. Calculator, Calendar, Clock, Contacts, Email, Files, Gallery, Music, Settings, and Web View Tester. 
So let's just open up calculator and see what it's all about. So when you click on it, it actually opens up in a separate window, which is kind of cool. And everything looks like it's working here. Okay, that's good. Let's try clock. This also does load up properly. And I presume all of these do. So let's just look at settings and see what it shows for this. See if it maximizes. Okay, it does, in fact, maximize. So let's scroll down. And one thing that I did notice at first was that it showed the exact amount of memory and storage that I actually had on my device. So if we click on memory, it will show that it is out of a total of 9.5 gigabytes. And that is the exact amount of memory that I have on my system. And that's the same with the amount of disk space. So let's go to about device and see what it says for that. So it is running Android 7.1 Nougat and is using the Android security patch level of January. So those were the stock applications, but you will notice here that there is no Play Store and that is due to some legal issues between Google. But if you do want to install additional applications, you can actually install third-party APKs. And it does require a little bit of setup, but I'll be showing you that right now. So open up a terminal instance that is different from the one that is running Anbox. And here you want to install two things, ADB and Fastboot. So you can run sudo apt-get install, and then Android tools ADB, and then Android tools Fastboot. Enter your password. And it should install. So once you have those, you can open up a web browser. And here is where we are going to download the APK file. So you can use any website. For this one, I'll be using APK Mirror. It's a trusted website. And just search for a application name. So I'll just be using WhatsApp. And you can select whichever version you want. I'll just select the latest version, the stable version. And you can scroll down to see the available APKs or just click this button right here. And now here's the important part. You will notice here that there are three different variants. There are two ARM variants and then one x86. So make sure you download either x86 or 64. So that means 32-bit or 64-bit versions because you are running a computer which most likely doesn't have an ARM processor and you want to get the correct architecture. If you don't, it will give you an error when installing. So this is very important. Make sure you get the right one and then simply click download APK. And then you can choose where to save your file and just let it download. So once it's downloaded, you can just close out of your browser and then open up your file manager and navigate over to where it's downloaded. So you will see here that it is some long file name, but just for ease of use, I recommend renaming it to something easier so you can type it in quickly. I'll just do WhatsApp APK and I'll just move it to documents. Okay, so once all that's done, open up another terminal instance. And here we're actually going to install the file. So navigate over to the folder that you have the file in. So I have in documents, CD documents, and you should see the file there. And here you want to type adb install and then the name of the file. So mine's whatsapp apk apk. And if adb is not started, it will say this right here. And it should say success. Great. So if you go over to Anbox, you will see here that there is whatsapp. So I'll just click on that and show you that it actually works. Okay, so it thinks we have a custom ROM. Just click OK, agree and continue. And it looks like everything is going smoothly. So you've just installed a third party application, but what if you want to uninstall it? Well, it is a little bit harder than installing it. And you need the application package name to uninstall it. So with WhatsApp, it is com.whatsapp, so you want to run adb uninstall instead of install 
and then the name of the package so it'll be calm.whatsapp and it should just say success and as you can see whatsapp is gone but if you don't know the name of the um if the package name of the application and the application is on the google play store you can actually go to play.google.com and search the name of it so i have two dots installed here it's a game so if i look up two dots and click on the application up in the url you can see the name of the package so in the case of two dots it's com.weplaydots.2.android so you can just copy that and of course go back to terminal to uninstall it so i'll just run adb uninstall and then the name and it should say success so let's just check quickly and it is gone great so that's about gonna wrap up this video now Anbox isn't all good I mean you can see here when I open up WebView it opens it up in a window but just crashes right after you can see that it is a Windows surface error failed to create resize p buffer and i've noticed that happens with a lot of applications but i mean it's still pre-alpha so that's that's definitely expected and i mean on the top of gaming it actually does game fairly well surprisingly well actually so overall this is a very interesting and neat application and one thing i just really love about anbox is their approach to emulating it it's not exactly an emulator it's a container and it shares the same files with the kernel. So it is very integrated with your system. I just love how you can actually access your apps right from here and not have to actually open up the application manager. So if you want to emulate, you know, applications or just run some games, run some programs, you should definitely check out Anbox. Now, if you're looking for a really stable one, I don't recommend using Anbox as it is still really buggy, but I'm really excited to see where this goes. Thank you for clicking on this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more awesome Linux reviews, app tutorials, all that kind of stuff. And as always, thank you for watching. See you in the next video.